For those of you who don't know why some of these strange people started standing up, uh, I think that at the inaugural performance of Handel's Messiah, the king was present and he was somewhat hard of hearing. And when they began to sing the Hallelujah Chorus, he thought it was the national anthem. So he stood up, and of course when the king stands, everybody stands up. Uh, it's still appropriate for us, we should always stand for that, because it is so glorious and conveys the wonder of God's love with such power. Thank you to the choir, Doug and Robert, and our instrumentalists this morning. God bless you for letting God's gift flow through your lives. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, let your healing word come to these people now through me, or if the need be, then in spite of me, for Christ's sake. Amen. On Good Friday, I told you about how difficult it was to talk about the gospel stories in a society where really only a very few people have a conscious memory of what the Bible is about. I told you about the young woman asking the question, so what is it with the dead guy on the cross? It's kind of gross. Uh, and that's the sort of mentality that we are struggling with. People don't know the Bible stories, nor the power behind them. And if you think that trying to explain the dead guy on the cross is tough, just wait till the Easter story comes up and try explaining the story about this cadaver that rises up out of the grave and starts walking around. What do you do with that story? For many of you who were raised in the church, you don't even think about it. You were taught as a little kid, this is how it is. And if you believe this story, you're going to go to heaven. And if you don't believe that this cadaver got up and walked around, you're going to go to hell. Simple enough. When we were little kids, we were pretty smart. And we said, okay, I believe it. <laughs> but you know, that sounds an awful lot like brainwashing. And if you take a young person who has grown up without that story and start telling them about this dead body getting up and walking around, what are they going to say? They'll say it's nonsense. And you know what? It is nonsense. If that's all that the story of the resurrection is, is a reanimated cadaver, then it is nonsense. And it's no wonder the world rejects that story. We forced that story on people at a time when the church was really, really powerful. The church was the ultimate authority in society. The clergy were next to being living gods. Oh, those would have been glorious days. <laughs> I'm so sad I missed out. <laughs> but no more, my friends. The church does not have automatic authority. The clergy are no longer the voice of God. So the question is this, do we still have something to offer to the world? Something that's relevant and good and can actually change the world? It's a tough question. Because the faith that we have was formed 2,000 years ago. How can it be relevant for today? In that world, everything was different. The world existed in three levels, with heaven above, and earth in the middle, and flat earth, and down below the earth was hell. And all the Bible stories assume that three-tiered world, where you could go up into heaven or down into hell, we lived in a world at that time where everything was controlled by angels and demons working around us and in our lives. We lived in a context where we believed the world started 4,000 years ago and was going to end very shortly. We don't live in that world anymore. Because some things have happened since that time of the three-tiered world, some things
things have changed. A few little things, like for example, science. Copernicus, Galileo, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, Sigmund Freud, Stephen Hawking. We don't live in a three-tiered world any longer. Other things happened that have changed the way that everything is around us. We get world news instantly. In a world where people once believed that if you were good and righteous, God would protect you, we know about the Holocaust. We know about starvation and genocide in places such as Rwanda and the Sudan and Somalia. 